hello fellow learners once again i welcome you to the third clip under singular value decomposition computing so we'll be looking at a unique example and i i, I believe you are going to love it so don't forget to like subscribe and comment leave your comment down below so let's dive into it so we have this matrix that we have seen here in my previous videos we we'll look at cases where we have the matrix is square and then another case we we'll look at a rectangular matrix of which the number of rows are more than the columns but in this case we we happen to see a matrix which the number of columns are more than the number of rows so let's see how best to tackle this problem so first of all we have our original matrix here and the transpose so to without spending much time we, we we do the multiplication that's what a a transpose which give us two by two matrix and then from there we find the determinant we get the characteristics what find the determinant of the matrix and then equation two three gives us the characteristics what polynomial and then when it comes to equation four we when once we equate it to zero it's going to give us what our adding values of interest so from there we find the square root of each of the adding values to give us for the similar values as seen in line, uh, equation 7 and 8 then and the numbers in circumstances we we supposed to have a 2 by 2 matrix that's what root 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 12 0 0 root 10 but we need to also bear in mind that the our sigma matrix must take the same form of the same of our original matrix that is what a must have the same dimension so to do that we need to pattern the we have we need to pattern the columns with zeros as we have seen here so from there we go ahead to find our u which our u once we do the a a transpose it gives us an idea that we are interested in finding our u of which we have seen this matrix already in our previous slides so from there we have seen this characteristics polynomial uh, i mean this matrix in our previous slides so from to find a u we consider the case where our lambda is equal to 12 and then it gives rise to this matrix that we have seen here we perform the row reduction which we happen to see that what there's row 2 runs to 0 and then remain living uh, remaining row 1 and then we form an equation out of it based on the characteristics uh Carl Hermitin's theory so from there we see that if our y is equal to 1 then our x is also going to be 1 that gives rise to this adding vector that we have seen here and then we also consider the case where our lambda is equal to 10 so we do the substitution we get this nice matrix here and then we also perform the row reduction to give us what this matrix that we have seen here of which we can we express the first row in terms of equation 20 so when our y which is a free vector with free variable our y which is a free variable we choose it to be negative one if you choose y to be negative one then our x is automatically going to be what one so that's the adding vector that we have seen here also so then we if at the end of it all we put all our adding vectors into a matrix called z and we normalize each of the vectors each of the columns each column of the z to obtain our u matrix of interest as we have seen here so normalizing it we 
get this you nice matrix here so from there we then take another step of how to obtain our v so to obtain our v matrix we we have our a transpose a our a transpose a give us give rise to this three by three matrix here so falling on the Cal Hermitis principle of finding, we have to find the determinant and obtain the eigenvalues. But we already have a fair idea that our eigen, we, we already have a fair idea of some of the eigenvalues, which is we have for 12 and 10. So there is no need for us to spend much time finding the eigen, finding the characteristics polynomial and then the eigen values again. Switch. We already have two, so the remaining ones is going to be what zero. So we don't need to spend much time. So if you do the whole of this one, you will be arriving at something of this sort. So we don't need to spend much time on this one again. So from here, we know already know our lambda one, lambda two, and our lambda three will automatically be zero. So that's pretty pretty simple. So we, from here, we also consider the case where our lambda is equal to 12. And then, considering the case where our lambda is equal to 12, we, we have this, being the substitution, we have this matrix, 3 by 3 matrix here. We also perform the rule reduction, and finally, we arrive at this matrix here. So from there, we form our equations, of which, from the word go, we can see that, let's, considering equation 30, we can see that when our z is equal to 1, when our z is equal to 1, our x will automatically also be equal to 1. So, and then, if our z is equal to 1, then, from here, doing the substitution, our y is also going to be equal to what? 2. Let's give rise to this vector that we have seen here. And from there, we still go ahead and consider the case where, consider the case where our lambda is equal to what? 10. So if lambda is equal to 10, we are getting some interesting matrix here, which is what? 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 4. And then this row vector that we have seen here. So then we perform a row swap, which row swap, which we happens to we happen to get this matrix here. So we know this one is a scalar multiple of this one. So the third row runs to zero. Then we go ahead to form our equations. We see that our z is equal to zero. Okay, it's two z. So two z automatically tells us that our z is equal to zero so if z is equal to zero then we'll be now be we'll, we'll now be left with equation 34 to solve for which we consider our y to be a free vector so if our y is a free vector we choose y to be negative one if y is negative one then our our x is going to is going to be what two so that's the matrix that we have seen here. That's the vector that we saw. That's the vector that we have seen here. Then we also take a step further down to find the remaining vector. Okay, you can cons considering the case where our lambda is equal to zero. It's also doable, but it's going to, to <laughs> it's going to be a long process. So we still want to find a way, a shorter way to arrive at this. So then we have our a times our x, which is equal to zero. And so we know this is our a matrix that we have seen here. And then our x, which is x1, y, and z, all equal to zero when you multiply. So we then form, perform a row reduction, which we were able to get this matrix here. We also, from here, we divide the second row by two and we arrive at this very matrix that we this very matrix here so then we still go ahead and perform form 
an equation from here okay or from here from we we obtain this equation so from here we are saying now okay we want to consider the case we consider the case where our z is going to be negative 5 so if z is negative 5 then our y is going to be equal to what 2 so if so having obtained our z and our y we then do the substitution into our equation 29 39 and then equation 39 our x is going to be what 1 is going to be equal to 1 so having obtained this one then we normalize this equation we normalize all these eigenvectors normalizing all the eigenvectors eventually we happen to get our v matrix that we are interested in so from there we rewrite our a matrix we say our a is should be equal to what u sigma and v v transpose so this is our v transpose and this is our sigma matrix and then this is our u matrix so we have come to the end of this lesson i believe this video really contains a lot of information and i would like you to please like comment and subscribe thank you